Hi, this is Nate with Mix Methods, and this is a quick tip on how to most effectively use software monitoring when you're in Logic Pro X. Now, when you are listening back to something live as you play it, whether it be somebody's voice or an instrument, there's really two main options for how you hear it back. You can either do what's called direct monitoring, and that is where you hear the signal go into your interface and then it comes directly back out. So all you adjust is the volume that you hear, say, in your headphones, but it doesn't go anywhere else before you hear it. The second way is what's called software monitoring. Now, the difference there is that if your track has plugins on it that affect the sound, for example, say, an electric guitar running through a virtual amp simulator, then you could benefit from being able to hear that and so the signal runs into your interface through the computer and then back through your interface so that you can hear it with the software effects added. Now, in order to turn that on, you go up to the upper left-hand corner where it says Logic Pro X, select Preferences, and then Audio. Now, the first thing you can do is check your input and output devices and make sure that your recording interface is selected. And in my case, it is the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40. And then if I click on the General tab, that's where this checkbox kind of right in the middle there that says Software Monitoring, that's where you will find that setting. Now, one thing to be aware of is that Generally, you don't want to be hearing both direct monitoring or software monitoring. You want just one or the other. So what I generally make sure to do is that either uh, if it's an interface that has a control on the front of it, or if it has uh, the interface has its connected software, I make sure to mute the direct monitoring before I turn on software monitoring. So now I can check software monitoring and you will then hear the sound back from through the channel. Now, the reason that you don't want both at the same time is that, generally speaking, you will get just a little bit of a delay or uh, latency in the signal because of the time it takes for your computer to process the sound and send it back to you. Now, this can be adjusted on the Devices tab if you go to I.O. Buffer Size and that changes the buffer time that your computer has to think about how to process that information. Now, generally, you want to have that as low as your computer can handle without causing any issues. However, if you set it too low and your computer can't process all the data, it will cause an error in your recording and it won't capture it. It'll probably just stop your recording and tell you that it can't keep up. So, I generally keep it set to 128 samples, which is kind of a nice balance between not having too much of a delay in the signal, so I can still perform okay, but it gives it a little bit of a buffer so the computer has time to think through all the information. However, if you have a fairly new and fast computer, don't hesitate to try a lower buffer size and see if your computer can keep up with it. So. Just to show you this in action then, I have an electric guitar plugged in. So software monitoring is currently turned off and I'm hearing it directly. So here's a little bit of that guitar. And as you can tell, it sounds very clean right now. So that might be fine for just laying down something simple, but if I really want to get a sense of what it sounds like, I'm going to, again, turn off my direct monitoring, then turn on my software monitoring, and then you will hear that we get the live input as it's being played. And one more quick tip, if you want to use the software tuner, you will also want the software monitor button to be pressed or you're not going to see any reaction from that plugin. So do make sure your software monitoring is turned on if you want to use the software tuner. So that is how to use direct and software monitoring in Logic Pro X. If you found this video beneficial, I would greatly appreciate if you would subscribe and stay tuned for more recording tips.